Hi, I'm Josh Scott. So you want to get into the flying RC hobby. It's the best hobby in the world. With all these amazing aircraft, it's hard to pick which one to start with. So before you choose, we have some things we'd like you to consider. This RC Beginner Series is brought to you by Horizon Hobby. This is Josh Bixler. Hi. He has over 25 years experience in RC flight. That is over a quarter it's of a, a century. Time. How old are you? I'm 35 years old. I don't believe it. <laughs> so what we want to do today is we want to help you find the right plane for you when you're first starting out. But what is the right plane? What do you think? Uh, something that looks sweet. Something that just is going to impress your friends, you know, really, really fast. Here we go. Like I like that. the way this looks. Look, it even has a detachable nose. Yeah. For yeah. fun. Now, he's right. It, it is cool looking. It is fast. It yeah. is not the right plane. So this is though. what you want. No. It's, it's got, it's, you well, can hold on to it on the bottom. Think about it. The definition of cool you is what? Is, is, it, is it what looks cool or is it what you can fly? Definition of cool? Yeah, what's the definition of cool? It looks cool. It looks cool. And it's fast. Now, will it look cool smashed into the ground? No. No. So that means you couldn't fly it, could you? Why? Because if you fly it and you crash it, it's not going to look cool anymore. Oh. Friends, take your time and choose wisely. Although we want to get to this, you will get to that eventually. But there's some careful steps you must consider first before taking the step to the awesome striker. Since this is the first episode of our beginner series, we want to give you guys some do's and don'ts when it comes to picking out your first plane. Picking your first airplane is incredibly important. If you go the wrong path, you're gonna have some crashes. Now the first thing you want to consider is channels. How many channels does it have? Channels is the different the functions of your plane. It takes you left and right, fast and slow, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. As many channels as you can get is probably <laughs> the best way to go. No. If you can... No. Keep what? it simple, friend. But the, look at all these buttons. I know, the look buttons will, the buttons will come later. The buttons will come later. I see them now. The, the more functions you have in an airplane, the more functions you have to master. Okay. Now you know the bomb drops, all the cool stuff, the this smoke stuff systems, is rad. it's coming, but not today. It's much better. This is a four channel airplane. You have your aileron, your elevator, your rudder, and your throttle. That's good. But that's it? Uh, that's it. But it's a lot better to go with something like a three channel. Because that's got, wait, three? Three channels. You got your throttle. That's less than four. Your, that's less than four. It's also more simple as well too. You have things also coupled with a three channel like dihedral. Mm -hmm. What dihedral gives you is a self writing principle. So when it banks, this wing is creating more lift than that wing and it self writes itself. So that's why it's going, the wings are kind of going up. That's like why that. it's kind of saddled in the middle. Yes. Yeah. Like, like a flying V. Okay. Yes. So simple is better. All right. Complicated comes later. You can get a complicated radio if you want, but you can always use those functions in the future when you have your awesome strikers and planes like that. Another thing you want to consider is the speed of your airplane. Good point, brother. Fast is good. You got the need, the need for speed. <laughs> fast Nothing is like, fantastic, but again, when you get there. The striker. The striker is excellent. Fast. When you get there, you don't want to just jump right into the striker. The problem with the striker is when you're starting off in the hobby, you don't have the reaction time that you need for the striker. As you fly more and more, your reaction gets quicker and quicker to what the airplane's doing. But I'm younger so than you. This striker does almost 100 miles an hour. Almost. I can react faster than you. You are younger. Oh, you didn't see that coming. I did not see that coming. You know, you probably like a lot of video games too, right? I, yeah. Bad thing is, friends, there's no reset on a model airplane unless you're flying a simulator. Okay. No real life model airplanes, you can hit a red button and have it all pop back together. So it's much better to go with a slower airplane at first so you can learn the controls. And if you make a mistake, you can correct that mistake before you hit the ground. Another thing you want to think about is the build of your plane. Yes. You want something that you've put your heart, time, your soul into. This is quite a quite a piece it's of a, It's a work of art. It, it truly is. This is actually a balsa wood plane covered wood. with monocoat. Uh, beautiful, beautiful workmanship. Gorgeous. In this. So go with this. Start start right here. Go with this when you're ready and you're able to fly. This is a four channel airplane. Carries a different wing loading than a lot of the other foam airplanes. It's gorgeous. And actually, this is a good step someday, but Going with foam is actually the easiest way. Foam? Foam is good. Foam is spongy. It's, yeah, but it's not ugly. You know what? Foam can be glued back together with hot glue, tape, CA, foam safe CA. You can repair it quickly. And, and the sad fact is, is when you do get into this hobby, it doesn't matter what you pick, you are going to have mishaps. You are going to hit things. You are going to crash. That's grim. Foam is a lot easier to fix than a beautiful balsa wood model. It's ugly. Well, you know what? The nice thing is if it, it starts out ugly, yeah. it stays ugly. If it starts out beautiful, it stays. It gets uglier as time oh, goes on. And you I know what? what? Your saying. love for the airplane diminishes. You know, imagine if you roll this into a ball and you pick up all these loose. Kind of like when you first meet someone and they're beautiful, yeah. but then they get ugly. You're no, just, your love diminishes. No, it's not like that. Imagine this. Imagine this. Thousand piece puzzle. 
10 piece puzzle, mm. all right? For kids. If you if you take that puzzle and you bust it up into pieces, would you rather be putting together a 10 piece puzzle again or a thousand piece? Depends on how much you like puzzles. There you go. My grandma loves Next them. Next point. Most reputable manufacturers, especially with foam planes, will have replacement parts readily available at local hobby shops. That's an excellent thing because when a mishap does happen and say you can't put it back together with some tape and hot glue, you can go to the store and buy a brand new one. You're back in the air in no time. Another thing you want to think about, um, real planes, they're not, they're not electric. They don't use batteries, they use fuel. And so fuel, when yes. you start out, you're gonna- Oh, the smell of fuel, the sound of the motor, it's awesome. You wanna keep it real. So this is a gasser. That is a Not gasser. Not that kind of gas, but it's, you put, you put like nitro you or gas. You have trouble holding or, it there? What? You got it okay? Oh, I got it. It's a big gasser. It is. Big is good. Yeah, big is good. And actually, this is an excellent airplane, but not for your first airplane. It, number one, it's a Warbird. Uh -huh. Number two, you have a motor there. That's a glow motor. Uh -huh. a glow motor, you need special fuel, special mixtures. In the cold weather, it doesn't start as easy. Also, if you chop your throttle on electric, the motor turns off instantly. All that power is taken away. Oh. On that engine there, if you chop it, it's going to go to an idle. It sounds complicated. A lot more complicated, a lot more dangerous too. So gas and glow, gasoline being a mixed fuel, glow being a uh, nitro uh, mix is excellent. When you get there and you're ready to take that chapter in your life of tinkering with motors to try to get it started. Um, also, say you're a newbie pilot. I'm a newbie pilot. Hello, newbie pilot. You I have 25 you, years of experience. <laughs> you go out to the field, you slap your battery in, you give it throttle, it takes off, it flies. With a gas plane, God forbid it's not dialed in quite well. Sometimes they just like to stop in midair. You have to have the flying skills needed to bring that plane in dead stick. And the whole flying experience changes when you don't have a motor in front doing what it's supposed to do. But it is a big plane. It's a beautiful big plane. And that's what you want. You want it to be able to take it up so high that no matter how high it is, people can still see it You know, it's awesome glory. You're actually very correct in one of the aspects. The bigger the airplane, the easier it is to see and all of it's uh, changing. When you're flying mm -hmm. a big airplane and it changes direction, a lot easier to see the orientation and of the airplane. Cool. But there is a downside to bigger planes, what? especially that beautiful P-51 Mustang. What? As you're flying through the air, it is a lot faster. Okay. Faster airplanes need more room. Yeah. What if you're in a small park? You can't fly that in a small park. No, you you want to fly the airplane. You don't want to dodge little children and puppies. Oh, that sounds fun. Pick the right plane for the right environment. It's not fun, trust me. It's okay. very stressful. And you're going to have enough stress getting into the hobby, learning new things. Mm -hmm. You don't want to add to it. So you want something smaller. Something smaller is much better. Actually, and there's a lot of different avenues to go. Now, we are Horizon. Uh, this is sponsored by Horizon. And so we have a lot of product here. But there's a lot of really great planes out there. The Champ. The, the Champ is a Champ. Excellent flying airplane. Also, I mean, we're going to be talking about scratch builds here. You can build your own. Ooh. This can fly in a backyard, easy as can be. And that's made out of foam. This is the FT Flyer. Yeah. This is our own design. One you can build this. Ports. Exactly. And it's tiny. And it's tiny. And the nice thing about that is it's very slow, very floaty. And when you have a smaller airplane that's lighter, guess what happens when you hit things? It goes like this. It does go like this, but when you're flying a lighter, smaller, slower airplane, less damage. So you can actually wreck it more often without having to do as much repair. So if you pick that beautiful P-51 Mustang with all that balsa and monocoat and everything, remember the thousand piece puzzle I was talking about? Yeah. You got a lot more pieces to put back. Plus together. a ball of flame because it's got gas in it. Exactly. So keep it simple. Simple's good. Three or four, probably three channels. Yeah, the, the fewer channels, fewer things you have to master. Keep it slow. Yeah, make sure it's built out of foam or something like that that's easy to repair, easy to find replacement yes. parts. Yes, and along with keeping it slow, keeping it foam, Stay away from the Warbirds and the EDF jets. Okay. They're really cool. You're gonna They're get really there cool. eventually. But you know, the whole thing is, is you want a plane that you can learn to fly, that you can get up in the air and enjoy. You're gonna fall in love with flight, not the airplane itself. Yeah, you're being kind of a party pooper. I'm sorry about that, brother. You know what? There's a lot more joy. Once this plane is wrecked, you have that downhearted feeling. It's just like, oh, what have I done? I've wasted all this money. I've wasted all this time. You don't wanna have to feel that. And you are gonna have your downfalls in life with, with you know, crashing, hitting things. It's much better to choose an airplane that'll get you back up in the air quickly. Man, you seem like a good dad. If you do the right choices now, you're gonna get to those EDF jets, the strikers, all those fast warbirds a lot quicker. And you know what? There's also a lot of good options getting into the hobby. Lots of different configurations you can like get those packages. planes in. Packages, exactly. Yeah. Good way to explain it. Uh, first one, let's go with the easiest thing. If you wanna get in the air, you don't know anything about the hobby, but you wanna fly. Okay. What would you get? Uh, now, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Let's, 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 let's go to the hobby store. Let's pick up an airplane that has everything you need from the battery yeah. to the charger. Pull it out of the, the box controller. And, it, and it, you open the box, it just flies right By out. the time the battery's charged, you're ready to go. Okay. That's yeah. called an RTF or ready to fly, ready my friends. Ready to fly. Ready. Yeah. Actually, oh, that champ right there. Champ again. Yep. 
A lot of different manufacturers that are reputable will carry ready to fly aircraft. Now what that includes is it includes it your includes transmitter, everything. battery chargers, your airplane, sometimes even extra props. Yeah. Um, everything you need to get up in the air quickly. Also, if they're reputable, it better come with some really good instructions. You too. like that word, reputable. Reputable. Mm. That's going to be a very strong word because I just learned it. So what's the next one down from uh, RTF? What do you think would be the next crucial step? Uh, when you have your own, you have your own transmitter and you can you connect it to whatever plane. Amen, brother. That's Perfect. what it's called. I think there's an abbreviation. Yeah, actually, there's lots of different abbreviations. You got BNF, bind and fly. You got transmitter ready. You got um, plug, plug and, and fly. fly. Exactly. Lots of different things. At this point, you really want to read the package on any of these models that are not ready to fly. You're going to have a list of requirements. It'll say requires, and sometimes it's a battery, sometimes it's a transmitter, sometimes it's a charger and things like that. So say I already have this guy. So you already have that guy. And um, then I, I buy a, a, a BNF like this. A BNF or transmitter ready. Now keep in mind, always at this point, always check what is required. Because this is a bind and fly. This transmitter will indeed talk to this airplane. But say it's a different manufacturer and you have to have your own receiver. So always read what's required. Okay. But what this gives you the ability to do is, is say you got this from a different airplane and you, yes. you like the radio, it's a fun radio. Uh -huh. You can use this to talk to other planes. But also say you really want to come into this hobby and you fall in love with something a little bit more advanced. I don't know, like, like maybe this. Ooh, that's shinier. That's shiny. It's I also like it. a lot more expensive. Oh. But do you, do you know when people like want to learn how to play guitar? Yeah. You have two options. You can go to a pawn store uh -huh. and you can simply pick out a used $50 guitar. Or a first act from Walmart. First act, is that what it's called? That's kid's stuff, yeah. Okay, you, you can pick up a cheap guitar. It's not gonna perform really well, it's gonna be very basic. Or if you know, I'm gonna commit, I'm gonna get into this hobby, and I really love this transmitter, you could buy something the equivalent of a Fender, which would be some crazy advanced radio that you know you're not gonna have to replace for many, a many years. 1972 Telecaster? I don't know what that means. Mm, put some humbuckers in that so, sucker. So, bind and fly, transmitter ready, plug and fly, all those will basically give you everything you need, sometimes minus the battery and your transmitter. But what it does give you is a lot of flexibility to pick a transmitter that you know you love and that you're gonna keep for a long time. So we moved on and we've, we've learned how to fly. We have, Arf! that's pretty good. You like that? We, we, we have our motors and we have speed controls. We have knowledge of all that good stuff. Arf. Arf. Almost, Almost ready to fly. Uh, here we go. Look at that. No, you just had to pick up the jet, didn't you? Yeah. Look at that. This is what you want to start with. This is beautiful. This is great. You do not want to start with it though. You will get there very, very quickly. By the time you get to this, an ARF would be perfect for you because you're already going to know a lot about transmitters. You're going to know a lot about motors and servos and speed controls. Maybe even retracts. That's what those extra channels are for. Ooh. Yes. So your wheels go up. But now the beautiful thing about ARFs is you already have all that knowledge gained from your, your previous models. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and if you're at this stage, hopefully you better know your stuff as far as that goes. But there's a huge variety of ARFs out there. Probably one of the largest selection of manufactured models are indeed ARFs. <laughs> that gives you the flexibility to choose your electronics, choose what you want. You have a lot more control, but also the experience is gonna be widely different. Okay. Say you just love speed and you love high performance. I do. You're probably gonna put a lot bigger motor than other people will. So you're gonna have some people saying, oh, the plane doesn't fly too fast. And other people saying the thing is a rocket ship. And all other people, what you do with it. Other people overpowering it and getting their CDs wrong and saying it's a horrible plane. So your experience will vary. You really need to know your stuff and also listen to the specs and what's required for it. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. As long as your heart's saying to pick something that you can achieve and, and, and use to grow in the hobby and fall in love with flight. Now there's another kind where you can like just start and just build it from, from yeah. the bottom up. Actually, the neat thing about this RGC journey is as you get more involved, you want to learn more aspects of it. Okay. And, and it's not just flying, but then it starts to become building and the yeah. love of building gets greater and greater. Right. And kits is an excellent avenue into that because you're not just buying the airplane all covered and beautiful. Yeah. You're, you're taking you're some plans. You're doing it yourself. And matter of fact, check this out. Putting your heart and, and soul this, into this it. This is small. The nice thing about kits is they can be small, they can be huge, but what you end up with are some key ingredients here. Look, I'm already done. No, this is partially built okay. for you guys and for you. Huh? What you start off with is something that looks a lot more like this. Oh. You got formers, you got sticks, you got little numbered things. You don't have as much instructions, but what you do have are plans. Oh, wow. Now, the beautiful thing about this is we talked about ARFs, how you, you know choosing your electronics and everything is part of your journey in the building. This is a whole nother leap into it because what you're doing is you're taking raw materials and you're constructing your own based off of preset instructions. Mm. Now, there's a lot more victory to be gained, but there's also a lot more different variations. It's because scary. It's all dependent on your skill level of building. Uh -huh. uh, if you're getting to the hobby, your skill level of building is probably not going to be the best. Okay. So you're going to have vastly different comparisons. And what if I put all my time and energy into this beautiful thing and then I crash it and it breaks well, into a million pieces? There is actually one benefit to, to kits. Uh -huh. If you can build it, you can repair it. 
And also you have these beautiful things called plants. Plants don't go away. Friends, if you ever do a kit, do not get rid of your plants. So rather than having to go to the store, you can actually get more raw materials uh -huh. and you can reconstruct your wing, you can reconstruct the tail, you can build another fuselage and you can get back flying again. So we go from all those uh, really nice intricately cut pieces of wood that form a beautiful craft yes. again to this. To that. You are the kit maker and you are the builder. And, and this is honestly where you can choose two paths into the hobby. You can choose the ready to fly aspect and, and that venture is wonderful. It gives you everything you need. You don't have to stress about that. Or this is the one exception, you can go into scratch building. And the nice thing about scratch building, you have thousands upon thousands of amazing designs that you can easily get and you can create yourself. And this stuff is cheap. Cheap is good. Cheap is you're gonna wonderful. crash it. You're gonna crash. And you know what, we, we have flight tests, we love our foam board. We love the common simple materials. And this is another aspect to getting into electric flight. You can't make a foam gas powered airplane. No. Uh, gas and foam just don't get along very well. It does not work. But what you can do is take a simple dollar piece of foam board and one evening, build something out of five simple pieces of foam. Nice. And make an exceptional flying airplane. This is the FT Flyer. Now at Flight Test, we have free plans, a free build video, and if you don't like using razor blades, we even have speed build kits for these. That's but right. The nice thing about scratch building is, is if you can build it, they will come. It out, there is no intimidation. You crash it, you build another one, because you know, oh, I built this the first time. And oftentimes, as you build it more and more, every time you crash and you rebuild it, you're not only enhancing your skills as a pilot, but you're enhancing your skills as a builder. You know, you're ugly, but you're growing on me. Yeah, it's not bad. And here's the beautiful thing about scratch building too, is as you advance as a builder and a pilot, your skills are moving at the same pace. So you can start off with something like this, and you can end up with something like this. This was made out of foam. This is a foam board airplane. This is part of the whole swappable series as well. Once again, go to the dollar store, pick up some Dollar Tree foam board, all common materials. You can build a multitude of airplanes. It's not just flight test airplanes, thousands upon thousands of free plans out there. So that's a lot of different plane packages. Yeah, options are really good, brother. So what um, do you recommend? You know what? I'm frugal in nature. If I can build What's it- What's that mean? Frugal means cheap. I'm very cheap. If I can build it, I can rebuild it. So I always love going towards scratch building. It's gonna be a harder startup, okay. but the nice thing about that is once you get into it, you're comfortable as a builder, comfortable as a pilot. You don't have to open that chapter because it's already been opened. Gotcha. Yep. Now another thing you wanna consider is where the wings are on the plane. Like, are a they huge hot? Factor. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me see this one. You just love that yeah, P-51 Mustang, this, don't you? I know, it's, it's too big and it's yep. a gasser, but look at where the wings set. Yep. It's so it's so sharp looking. It is. It looks beautiful. I love the it. It really does. And you know what? Wings are put on planes for different reasons. For mostly so they fly. Mostly so. They fly. <laughs> you just taught me something. <laughs> yeah. That's Wings are located on on different planes for different reasons. Okay. Yeah. But the main thing to consider is is when you want a certain flight characteristic, as you get to be a better pilot. Yeah. You're gonna want it in different places. Yeah. This is a low wing. The next level is mid wing. Okay. And mid wings are wonderful. For what what reasons do you think? Uh, well, this is a 3D plane. The nice thing about mid-wing airplanes is the center mass, the wing, the thrust line is all neutral. So you get very crisp controls on all axes, yaw, pitch, roll. You're like crazy. Exactly. But you know what? It's not a good choice for beginners. Reason being is you want a plane to have but some But it's made soft. out of foam. It is made out of foam and it's actually not that fast either. Mm. But what you have is a plane that's very sensitive to the touch. Okay. It's easy to, to control it and wherever you plan is where it's going to go. You want an airplane that's going to self-correct, that's going to, if you take your hands off the stick, it's going to come back to a natural, happy so place. Oh, a high wing? A high wing, yes. Yes. The nice thing about high wing airplanes is because you combine the dihedral with the lower center of mass, every time you tilt that plane and you take your hands off, it's gonna naturally creep it's gonna, back. It's gonna cradle it. Exactly. It's gonna cradle that baby. You want an airplane, if you have an airplane that's stable enough to fly by itself, all you need to do when you're flying and you get in trouble is just relax. Let the plane take over, let it come back to a self-writing principle or property, and life is good. So high wing, low center of mass, all good things. What about wings? Wings. Just wings. Just flying wings? Yeah. You know what, There, I guess there is always an exception to the rule, huh? Yeah. Wings are fantastic. They have some drawbacks. This one's not set up yet. No, no. No, th this is a fantastic flying wing. Now the nice thing about wings is, is generally your motors are in the back. So if you crash in the ground, you've got a lot of foam to go safe. through. Exactly. And the other neat thing about the wings is the way they're designed, the way they fly, is they actually be very slow or very fast. So you can start off with a very small motor on this, be putzing through the air, and what do you talk about slow airplanes? When they hit the ground, they don't get damaged as badly. Okay. Yes, exactly. Instead of pushing. And as you go along, guess what? If you want to make this plane more intense, mm -hmm. you just put a bigger motor on it. Nice. So that's a very nice thing. Wings are kind of the exception to the rule. Although you do have point and shoot, uh, it's not going to self-correct, it's not going to come back. Mm -hmm. You do have the added ability of, of more protection on your electronics 
and you can start off with a very slow and also the stall characteristics are much more docile on a lot of these great wings. So this is something that can make you fall in love with hobby. It is something Bring that Bring a smile to your face. So as a recap, what's the best wing? Uh, you can go with the flying wing or you can go with the high wing. Flying wings and high wings are wonderful. Okay, cool. Yeah. Another thing you want to think about is how do you go? What makes it Everyone go? Everyone has to go. So let's, let's just talk about all the different propulsion systems. Okay. All right. What we, first of all, what did we recommend? Uh, we probably recommend like a, a, a tractor or a pusher. We did recommend a pusher. Yes, yes. Pushers and tractors are great. This is a pusher. Okay. It pushes. It's, it's behind. It pushes. And there's some great benefits to pushers. A lot of trainers have that because there's this nice soft foam piece in the front here. Right. I'd rather be hit by this. Than hit by this. It's better to have a black eye than no eyes. Exactly. Keep the whirling blades of death away from your body. Right. Now there are also some challenges with, with hand launching pushers. You gotta be really careful. You where don't put your fingers through it. Is, and it happens, so be careful with that. Tractors are also exceptional for a big key factor. You got a tractor so, over there? Yeah, something like this. Yes. Now, you do have the uh, disadvantage of having all your electronics, your motor, your prop, if you nose in something, if you hit something, yeah. you're gonna cut something. Okay. You're gonna break something a lot more sensitive. This is a lot more, uh, able to be damaged right. than the actual Damageable. airframe. Damageable. Yes, yeah. And frankly, I'd rather hurt my airframe than my electronics, because you can always reuse your electronics. But the benefit with tractor is it's pulling the whole entire airframe through. So you have a lot more stable uh, flight characteristics in, tra or in tracking and, and just general performance. Okay, cool. Okay? What about electric ducted fans? EDS are incredible, brother. Yeah. Now EDS stands for electric ducted fan. What do you think that is? It's like a fan in a, in a duct. If you had a duct, actually, you're absolutely right. It is, it is a small, crazy, fast spinning propeller inside a tube that concentrates the air. Now, in order for these to fly, they have to fly fast. What do you think that means for takeoff and landing? That you have to go fast all the time. Pretty much it's always fast. And, and that's a big downfall when you learn to get into the hobby because you're going to have to react quicker. Remember we talked about how speed is a crucial factor? Yeah. You want time to be able to react and to fly the airplane. You're going to get here eventually, but the problem is if you jump in too quickly, even though this is a scratch build and you can it's repair it. It's made out of foam. It's made out of foam. It's wonderful. You're going to do a lot more repairing and a lot less flying. Oh. So EDS, a great chapter in the hobby. Maybe chapter 11 or 12, not one or two. Okay. Now, what if you, you're wanting to learn how to fly, yeah. but you don't have somebody who has a quarter of a century of experience like you do. <laughs> or, or say you just don't have uh, the good weather. Say it's the middle of the winter and you decide, you know what, I want to get into flying, but it's snowy, it's windy, it's just crummy weather out there. Yeah, you gotta wait for that groundhog. There's one word, simulators. 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 That's like a computer program. If, if you have a computer and you want to get into the hobby and you also want to experience the flight characteristics of an, of an actual real aircraft, before you get into it, there are amazing simulators out there that emulate the exact characteristics of real existing airplanes. So you can fly EDFs on the simulator. Case in point, I wanted to get into helicopters. I uh -huh. didn't know how to fly helicopters. I got on the simulator. I learned through the winter on how to fly helicopters. Come springtime, I was able to hover without any issues. And you can make all the mistakes that you want and just yes. hit reset. The reset button is a wonderful tool, especially for young kids. Say you're a father and you want to get your kids in the hobby and you want to do this together. The simulator enables kids to make mistakes without feeling destroyed or intimidated. For that matter, it works for us adults too. And there's another thing called a buddy box system. Buddy boxes are great too. You have a buddy that maybe has some experience. Just 25 years maybe of Maybe 25 years of experience. And, and he wants to help you along your journey. The nice thing about the buddy box is it enables the main, uh, main teacher pilot to override the student so you can have the freedom to make mistakes. So if I get into trouble, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Exactly. You take over. I can let you get right to the point where you're gonna hit the ground. I can intercept his signal and I can take over, retrieve the airplane, put it back up to altitude. You learn much quicker than having to constantly repair the airplane. Nice. Another great benefit with trainer systems is the communication. You make a mistake, I rescue the plane. I tell you immediately what you did wrong and what you need to do differently. Harshly. Next time. He says it in Not a really harshly. degrading it, way. Oh, this is a good thing. For anyone out there that has the opportunity to train, whether it be a kid, whether it be a friend, whether it be a family member, be gentle with your tone. Be encouraging at all times. They don't make mistakes on purpose. You want them you, to fall in love with the hobby. Yes, fall in love with flight. Don't let them be intimidated when they take the sticks and be worried about being yelled at. Always take a kind, gentle, instructive tone uh, to help them get into the hobby and also communicate what they did wrong so when you get them back up, they know not to do it the next time. So overall, what would you recommend? What plane would you go for? Truthfully, probably the plane I've been pulling down the most, and that's the Super Cub LP here. Uh -huh. It's excellent, it's economical, it's high wing configuration with plenty of dihedral, three channels, electric, and you can buy it in either a ready to fly or a bind and fly which it gives you a lot of options for the future. Very cool. I like the Swift. The Swift is phenomenal. Yeah, I've You're actually had some right. good success with it. And like we said, it's pretty versatile. Yes, fast and slow. it takes a hit too. It does. It takes it a hit. It does, especially one. with your prop in the back here, you have a lot of a lot of safety, a lot of safe 
guarding foam. To you, keep it safe. you lose some of the great properties of uh, self stabilizing flight with the wings, but what you gain is durability and also a huge speed envelope, the gentle stall characteristics. Right. At Flight Test, we have a plane or a wing called the Versa Wing. Uh, you can either scratch build it through the free plans and free build video, or you can even buy the speed build kit. But it's, wing is an excellent option. So basically, what I've learned today is don't go with the really cool, sleek looking stuff. Uglier yes. is better. Ugly is good. I mean, Ugly, look at us. Yeah. Ugly is cool. And the reason the planes are probably generally ugly is because they're designed to be stable. And oftentimes the characteristics needed to be designed into the airframe aren't gonna be the most attractive. Right. AKA Warbirds, EDF jets, things like that. Got it. All right, well, we thank you guys for watching and thanks to Horizon Hobby for sponsoring this episode. And this is actually the first of 10 episodes in this beginner series. And if you guys find some stuff on here that's really helpful to you, let them know. Let Horizon Hobby know. Absolutely. And our second series coming up is going to be all about aerodynamics. So we talked about picking the right airplanes. After the next episode, you should be able to tell why it's so important. That's going to help you in for many years to come. All right. So look for it. All right. See you next time. See you next time.